Hello, I'm Carrie Ann, and today I'm reporting from Wired's Next Gen uh, event here at Tapaco Dock in London. Okay, for those of you who don't know, Wired is a magazine all about technology and innovations, and they had their first ever Wired conference just for young people. Here you can see there were some great hands-on activities for young people, doing some 3D printing, um, having a go with some technology, and there were also some really great workshops as well, getting kids making movies, or doing some coding, or interested in making their own social network. But really, the highlight of the day was the talks that were given. They were really inspirational, and here are some of my favorites. I'm really excited to be here today, uh, because it's so great to see so many fellow young people <laughs> doing stuff in technology, and actually, you know, everyone in this room is a founder, is a programmer, is a designer, has ideas. So it's really exciting to see what's gonna happen in the future um, with the people in this room. And if you think about today, um, in the world we live in, we have access to so much information online. And it's really exciting because it means you can teach yourself anything. And actually teaching myself things is a hobby. And if you look it up online because I didn't know this, it's actually a real thing called autodidacticism. Instead of going to school, you can actually spend your time teaching yourself things. And so it's really exciting because it means as a young person, you don't have to necessarily follow what's on the schooling curriculum. You can actually find your own path and come up with new and exciting ideas and companies. And so today what I wanted to do is, is spend a brief time just going through the story of what happened to me and Sumli and, and also what you can do as well with the access of information that exists today. So I am, um, in 2008, when I was only 12 years old, I was kind of going to, to normal school as anyone else, um, we became really interested in iPhone applications. So the App Store had just been announced and I thought there are so many games and exciting applications, why can't I do one of these things? I want to learn how it's done. And so, what I did is I actually went into an Apple store and just asked a store assistant, you know, how do you, how do you program, how do you do apps? And they didn't even know what an app was. And that was an Apple store. So this was kind of really early on, um, back in 2008. But what I did, and what you can do as well, is I just literally typed into Google how to begin programming. I got a book called C for Dummies. So C is a programming language that then Objective-C, which is the iPhone application language, is based on. So I kind of began getting these reference books and also watching video tutorials online. So on YouTube and Vimeo, it's actually really good to watch tutorials of people coding line by line, because you can kind of watch the video, pause it, go to a line of code, then go back and watch it. So that was kind of a really interesting medium to discover this information. But it, this iPhone application in the summer of 2008, which was a bit silly, it was called Finger Mill, and it was a treadmill for your fingers. So it's like a really silly game. It had like one image, it was, just, it was literally just an image of a, of a treadmill. But it was really exciting because on the first day of putting that app on the store, I actually made 79 pounds from it, which is crazy, like, um, because it was a 59p application. And at that moment, I realized there's actually something amazing here. There's a palpability, palpability to it, and you know, anyone, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, London, San Francisco, anywhere, at any age can create something amazing. And so for the next few years, in the summer holidays, kind of while I was at school, I would set myself a little project or task to try and learn something more about iPhone programming. So I did a few more applications just because it was something that I kind of indulged in. It was exciting, it was fun to create something. Really, then I made the shape of a play sign like this. And so this is a, this is a video of something we did for Wired in 2011. And then if I want to stop it, I can make a stop sign like this. And then I decide, okay, well, I like this video, so if I give it a thumb, hopefully, yeah, then I get a like. So if I put my fist together like this, I can close, and then I can go back up another level. Um, and let's go and have a look at models. So in here we've got a series of 3D models, and um, let's try this one of a face. And so what I can do now is using the pinch, I can move around the model like this. And then if I move my hands like this, then I can zoom the model. And then use my hands to um, close I it. agree. When I was a kid, there was no such thing, or I wasn't told that you could be an entrepreneur. So I went and got jobs and then realized you could. And the difference is huge. Um, but my one bit of advice would be remain young. Be a young person. Behave like a young person. Because starting a business is playful and fun and silly and weird. And you have to learn 
whole way through and never stop learning. And basically, you can compare it to being a young person, being brave, falling over, picking yourself up, having a go. Oh, whoops, that didn't work. Have another go. Don't give up. Never give but up. But you asked learning. me, when I was your age, what I wanted to do, I would have had absolutely no idea. I certainly would have thought I'd be standing here doing what I'm doing. When I was your age, I, I loved art and design, um, DT, all I really, really loved, um, and what I wanted to do for A-level. But my teachers, I was, went to a good school, and I was a girl that could do science and maths, which was very important for my career in the city that I, of course, wanted. So I ended up reading physics, maths, chemistry, and further mathematics. I then came to university, and I wanted to do something creative. I wanted to do product design, or I wanted to do architecture, but I didn't have any art. I hadn't got a portfolio to show my creative side. So I left it right to the last minute, um, and my physics teacher said, hey, Emily, why do you do physics? You've got to be joking. So, you know, I think we one at Oxbridge. So I applied to six unis, five to read astrophysics, um, and then one Oxford to read physics, because I didn't do astrophysics, and then got my letter, went to the interviews, and thought, shit, now I've got to go. <laughs> so I went and did a year at Oxford, um, and then I left. And I went into the middle of the countryside and did an art course in the middle of nowhere, and I went to Brighton and did product design, which I absolutely loved. Um, really, really loved it. My third year was placement year, where you go and either study abroad and work in industry. And I went to Milan and to the design school. I spent the first half of the year studying. The second half I fell in love um, with my bike. I'd never been on a road bike. And a girlfriend and I decided to cycle the length of the UK for charity. So we bought bikes. We trained for four months. Um, and I got the bug really badly. Here I am. Two years never, ever, 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 ever do anything for money. Ever. Ever. Now, I know this is idealist, but never ever do it, basically. Do it for the love of it, and I'll tell you why. I know this is idealist, but if you do something for money, it gets you money. Cool, great, you can buy some more episodes of Adventure Time, do whatever you like. If you do it for the love, you get satisfaction, pride, ownership, and money. All those extra things, all from doing it the nicer way. Persistence always beats resistance, hands down, that is true. If you want something so bad, keep at it, keep going, keep talking to people, keep working hard, keep finding the things you love, keep doing what makes you happy despite what people tell you. Because look what tiny little water droplets can do to solid rock. Since I'm even not there with you today, I want to feel close to you guys, and so thank you so much. Uh, this is, this is Ghost. <laughs> and like I said, anywhere that, that I could. Um, and so playing live, I think, really helped prepare me for being able to play like this and connect in this way. Because I've seen a lot of people sort of try to play. A lot of people, you know, will shoot a YouTube video. But that doesn't mean that you have to connect and, like, use eye contact and really touch people live. And so live for me is my, my favorite way of connecting. And so I think all of that live performing in real life really prepared me for performing here. And now I love this too. It's amazing. You can tour the world the at night without Central leaving your room. As a beauty and lifestyle channel where I talked about beauty products that I had bought and liked and which ones I thought were worth it and which ones I thought perhaps weren't worth it and also shopping and fashion. But why is this so special to me? And the reason is it's because it's the connection. Whilst it's fun to be creative and make these videos and make the content, that you, you can literally dream an idea and be like, yeah, I'm going to make it, and you just do it yourself. You don't need to answer to anyone, you don't need to ask permission, unless it's obviously in the grounds of good taste, and you can just run with your idea, run free with it, and that was so exciting to me. And what was even more exciting was that people, by this point, a lot of people were watching and communicating back and saying, I'd love to see you talk about such and such, or I would like to see you talk about fashion for the plus size woman or I'd like to see how you do your eye makeup and all that kind of stuff. So with that feedback, it only inspired me Why to go Next further. Gen 2013 was a really, really interesting conference full of so many different types of speakers from people setting up their own businesses, creating their own YouTube channels, um, becoming singer-songwriters, using Google Hangouts to reach their audience, telling their story in a really inspirational way to young people. I would fully recommend getting 
to go next year at Wired 2014, as I'm sure they would do it. Um, if you just head over to their website, you can see um, some of the talks that took place, some of the amazing speakers who were there that day, and you can probably hassle Wired to do another one next year. My name is Carrie Ann. I've been reporting from the Wired event for Geek Girl Diaries. Remember, just a mouse click away. Thank you.